Hello, my name is Michael Gray, and I want to talk to you about the NXT Eurodynamic System. Now, I want to start out by saying that I'm a clinician, and what I'm going to give you is uh, my personal critical review and assessment of the library's new NXT system as a clinician rather than a promotional talk as someone uh, who is uh, working directly for the company. My position is professor of the Department of Urology with the University of Virginia in Charlottesville, and I've been in this position and doing urodynamics for approximately 40 years. So the objectives for this are going to be to review the hardware and software of Libraries Medical's new NXT system, and I'm going to give you some individual studies in adult females with mixed stress and urge incontinence, uh, just to show you an example of, of how the data look and what I think are some of the uh, strengths of the system and some areas that are undergoing additional development. So, of course, the first question you might be asking is why update? Well, as I understand things, really what Library's goal was to combine elements of various urodynamic platforms that are now part of the larger Library Medical uh, Corporation. And in order to do that, they wanted to synthesize the best element of these systems into a single platform. Of course, it will have multiple individual urodynamic systems, some with greater or lesser uh, features to them. But the idea is that it will be unified under a single larger NXT system. And finally, they wanted to enhance ergonomic characteristics of the hardware and integrate their software into a Windows 10 operating system. So the hardware is all set up on an integrated portable cart that you can see to the right of this slide. It provides working space for a keyboard, a mouse. There's also a lower shelf that can be used to uh, house the lighter printer. There's an all-in-one mainframe computer that reduces overall weight and helps the balance of the cart in my experience. The card also includes a waterproof keyboard and mouse. The screen is a touch screen, and all of these elements are easily cleaned with antiseptic solutions, clearly important in 2020, uh, most of all. And uh, I find them to be quite easy to use. However, I must say that the keyboard requires a little bit of adjustment because it, uh, it demands an increased strike force because of the uh, waterproof covering over it. The peripherals are based on a sidearm, and you can see in, in this particular picture, the sidearm is oriented to the left. I find it to be very well balanced with the portable card. It doesn't cause it to tilt or list. And I will say that it can be set up on the left or the right side of the cart based on your particular needs. In addition to that, the desktop level is adjustable. It has a single lever that brings it up and down I find that quite useful because I tend to have it higher when I'm working with a patient and doing active urodynamics, and then I readjust it after the study when I'm interpreting and reviewing results and putting uh, notes into the chart on my patient. So you can see the computer uh, up top. It's again, a flat screen. It is less weight. And then this of course shows you the sidearm. And we'll talk about elements of the sidearm in the next several slides. So let's start with a pump and infusion transducer. The pump is pretty similar to the older platforms. It's a peristalsis pump, and of course, it requires the specialized infusion tubing that you're used to providing. Now, my clinical experience suggests that the addition of an infusion transducer provides a more accurate recording of infused volume during testing as compared to some of the older systems that simply counted the resolutions that the pump did and estimated infused volume based on that. Personally, I found by looking at voided volume and calculating renal contribution of that voided volume, that the pump could be off as much as 100 mLs over the course of a test, particularly in certain patients who had larger BMIs or other mechanical reasons why the pump might not be as efficient as it might be in other individuals. So I find that the infusion transducer is extremely useful to this updated system. 
I will tell you that the infusion transistor also alerts users to larger differences based in infused versus estimated volume. I found this uh, useful in several patients when uh, there was an unrealized or unseen kink in the tubing that was causing a little bit of difficulty with infusion, even though the pressures were, were uh, measuring accurately. And so this little bit of extra monitoring I find to be uh, useful in highly selected patients. The uh, pump will alert users when the infused volume reaches 1,000 mLs. It is a quick alert that does not interfere with normal urodynamic testing, particularly if you have patients who have larger bladders, such as those with diabetes mellitus. There is a Rome device or a mobile device for transmission of uh, pressure data, which you see illustrated here. It also is able to transmit EMG data, which we'll discuss in just a few moments. Now this device uses Bluetooth technology that will transmit data, of course, from the patient connected to the Rome device over to the mainframe computer. The device then is, can be connected to the dock on the cart via cable, or it can be brought over to the patient via uh, the actual Rome device itself. The cables on this newer system, as you can see in the bottom right, use a magnetic interface that I find to be quite useful. The current Rome device pictured on the top right is an all-in-one unit, and the larger portion to the bottom is a very robust battery. Now, interestingly enough, the de ultimate design, which is illustrated on the bottom left, will allow you to take that battery and to simply clamp it to the patient's chair or perhaps a fluoroscopic table or examination table. And then it will connect to the patient more directly via that final little cable. That's going to be a very nice addition to the NXT system in my clinical opinion. The peripheral uh, hardware, of course, the Rome device will transmit data, as we said before, via the Bluetooth technologic platform. In addition, there is memory in the Rome device that saves data if transmission is transiently lost, which is very useful during your dynamic testing. It provides three ports, uh, as well as a fourth port that's available. But for your dynamic testing, it provides certainly the big three. It uses tr traditional or an older color code for identifying pressures. Uh, this system is currently set up for air charge technology. Therefore, intravesical pressure using that older color code system is in blue. Abdominal pressure is in red. And urethral pressure will be in yellow. If you look up here, uh, again, You'll also notice that there is ability of the same Rome device to use or to transmit EMG, and actually it will transmit that again via that same Bluetooth signal to the computer mainframe. The cable is typical of some of the older platforms, a head cable, it attaches to disposable EMG patches that have the type of shielding protection that provides a reasonable EMG when placed properly in the perianal area. There is a Euroflow transducer. It's a weight type uh, cell that measures urethral flow as urine collects in a beaker. Like the Rome device, it transmits data via a Bluetooth or it can be attached to a cable using that electronic, uh, that magnetic rather attachment that I spoke about earlier. Now it attaches to the sidearm just as the Rome device would for recharging. And I must say, I found the device more robust and easier to maintain than previous versions. The uh, beaker that you used is sturdier and easier to position. And the Euroflow transducer, the Euroflow device itself is uh, quite a bit more waterproof. It is quite a bit more robust when used in the urodynamic setting. The initial version, as it turned out, was a bit too sensitive. Therefore, the current version uses an airport to relieve this initial challenge so that the EMG is not picking up, excuse me, so that the Euroflow is not picking up little bits and bobs of uh, artifact that can occur when before that was redesigned. 
software, of course. It uses the same encrypted database as current Eurodynamic systems. It is HIPAA compliant and easily searchable by name. It includes several widely used uh, Lorraine tract symptom related instruments. It is not yet searchable by keywords such as diagnosis. And I think that this is, will be a big goal, I believe, that we would like to see uh, Labory incorporate as they continue to upgrade this system and continue to update the system. And the initial screen also provides a customizable list of studies that, that you can use, you know, at your particular facility. I find uh, a list of about three or four studies to be very useful as we do patients with various indications and various needs. They've incorporated multiple software features that aid novice clinicians with quality control during multi-channel urodynamic testing. I think that these are extremely valuable and many of us like me who've been in urodynamics for quite a number of years know that this is an ongoing goal in urodynamics to develop smarter software that can particularly help out novice users or users who do not do this on a very, very frequent and regular basis. So I think there's a lot of value in these, and certainly this will require additional investigation from clinicians as well as from our uh, partners in manufacturing. Now I want to show you some just some urodynamic tracings. I put these in not particularly for their clinical interest, but just to give you an idea of the types of things that you can do and how the traces look. One of the first things that I believe that you'll notice is that the, that the channels are clearly delineated. You see over to the right of the channel is as typical with your dynamics, the current uh, pressure measured at, uh, uh, in the larger. You can see the, the delineations of the channel. You can also see the ranges of the channel. I want to point out on this particular one that there are several points where EMG reaches the top of the panel you will see that it never bleeds over into the next panel. That's a unique feature of this particular system that was not present in older systems. In contrast to that, you'll see at several points when I ask the patient to cough, that indeed it does bleed up so, it, so that the chart clipping is limited to the EMG where it is not useful, but it doesn't apply to the various pressures. You will also see that the events are marked clearly. There is a little bit less language and less busyness than there are in some of the currently available urodynamic platforms, which I find particularly useful. You will see that there are also some other, there's a test call, for example, marked over there, auto pump active begin, Various sensations of bladder filling have been marked here. Clear uh, detrusor contraction, in this case, overactive detrusor contraction. You'll see that I followed that up with abdominal leak point pressure testing because it happened low. And if you look to the far right, you can see that we actually completed this test by doing leak point pressure testing with the intravesical catheter removed and just using the abdominal pressure as a uh, as a proxy for abdominal leak point pressure testing. So this is a good idea of a study, in this case, in a 39-year-old female who had mixed urinary incontinence after a mid-urethral sling. Now, one of the nice things about this one for leak point pressure testing is the idea of software assistance when you have stress testing. In this case, when you begin, when you do a stress test, you click on a stress test uh, button, which can be seen above, and you have the patient perform Valsalva maneuver, or you have your patient coughing. The machine will mark the maximum pressure, which can be useful, and it gives you four choices that you can see below. Cough stress test without leak, cough stress test with leak, and the same for Valsalva stress testing with and without leak. So I'll give you an example. This is just a, a pullout from one of my studies. Valsalva leak point pressure, and you can see that indeed it marks the PVS, which is 172, where the leakage occurred, visible up on the flow. And this gives me, uh, by subtracting baseline intravesical pressure, a, an accurate abdominal leak point pressure testing using the urodynamic software, which aids me in identifying the maximum pressure when leakage occurred. Again, another example, in this case, no obvious visible leakage, 
But again, I do know that in that, this is a cough LPP, and I know that there was leakage with that middle cough. Uh, and obviously there are various ways to demonstrate that. I also point out once again, look at that quite active EMG. You expect that when your patient is coughing and notice that it does not bleed over into the pressure channels, which makes for a cleaner uh, tracing, which I like very much. Now, urethral pressure profilometry is uh, one of the newer uh, features of the system. I've only completed a few studies with this. And uh, currently we use hand pulled uh, urethral pressure profiles and uh, I've also completed cough stress urethral pressure profilometry to assess pressure transmission ratios. I find the performance to be similar to current platforms. And uh, if you look up above, of course, they, they also have the dual, uh, excuse me, the dual balloon catheter that is quite useful for doing this type of uh, three channel urethral pressure profile testing. They will soon be releasing, as I'm told, a uh, UPP puller arm, which can be used for the other important parameters for certain uh, users who like to use those other things, such as total urethral length and functional urethral length. I want to go over what I think are some high priority uh, additions for urogynecologic practice. The first, of course, is gonna be completion of the mobile device to include uh, the uh, to include the extension cable, additional software, and a mechanical UPP puller to provide additional UPP data. Uh, I think that they need to expand their demographic database search capabilities. I also think that uh, there is a need for pressure flow nomograms specific to female patients. That will include the ICS or the AG nomogram of the Shasanya correction for diagnosis of bladder outlet obstruction in adult females, as well as addition of the CLEM software for advanced evaluation of intrusion contraction strength. I thank you very much for your time, and I wish you a good luck using the NXT platform system for urodynamic testing.